High View, it's Passion Week. This is a time for us to remember Jesus, who He is, what He has done for us. And we had great plans of hosting a gathering for all of our campuses to celebrate Good Friday. Obviously, that's not possible during these times, but we are shooting a video for you to be able to worship at home and to celebrate Jesus, to remember Him, to proclaim Him. Part of that service is going to contain taking the Lord's Supper together. This is a time for families to be able to celebrate together. And we want you to be ready and prepared for that moment of worship. And so we're shooting this particular instructional video for you to prepare to get ready to take the Lord's Supper together. Dads, what a great reminder that we have the privilege of leading out in our families and leading our families to remember Jesus and to remember him in his great sacrifice because he's instructed us to take the Lord's Supper as a remembrance and as a proclamation of who he is. So let's jump into the scripture. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And there in beginning in verse number 23, Paul writes for us, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. You know that for several years we have addressed this passage and we have taken very seriously that command to examine yourself. And we want you to do that. We want you to not enter into taking the Lord's Supper lightly. Examine yourself in three particular areas. First and foremost, the Lord's Supper is for those who are followers of Jesus. Have you proclaimed Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are you a follower of Christ, number one? Number two, are you being obedient to him? And I mean taking steps of obedience that the Lord commands you to take as a follower of him very early on. One of the great opportunities that the Lord gives to us is to proclaim him publicly in and through believer's baptism. Have you followed him in and through believer's baptism, which is our way of proclaiming him publicly, that we belong to him, that we are a follower of him? Thirdly, we say this phrase, are you a member of good standing in a gospel-believing church? Which means, are my relationships right? Are there things that I'm holding on to? Is there anger? Is there bitterness, malice, slander? Are there things that I, sins that I'm not repenting of that are very clear and obvious that I need to take the moment and confess them before the Lord? The Lord is good. He is gracious. We celebrate the Lord's Supper because of who He is and the sacrifice that He's made for us, that He's paid our price. It is a privilege to be able to take it. And so please take the time to lead your family well. Let the Lord just have a moment to examine your heart and let the Lord just lead you to Himself because the Lord's Supper is not only a remembrance, it's a proclamation. It's a proclamation of his sacrifice. It's a proclamation of his, the salvation and the forgiveness of sin that is in him in him alone. So let's get ready to take the Lord's Supper together. Let me give you a couple practical steps to be able to do that. First and foremost, go and get supplies. Go and get some matzo crackers or some other crackers. Go get some grape juice. Get it ready and prepared. Pray over it. Bless it. And, and then walk your family through the scripture and let's take the Lord's Supper together and let's remember who he is. Let's proclaim his goodness and his grace. Can't wait to celebrate with you together this Friday.